welcome back for another episode. We are your internet historians, and in today's episode, we will be discussing the history behind the movie Bombshell. The provocative real story of three whip smart, ambitious, strong women who anchored one of America's most powerful news networks, becoming headlines themselves when they risked everything to stand up to the man who made them famous. So, what'd you guys think? I liked it. Yeah. I like this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked it too. Um, it was entertaining. Yeah. And, and then, well, it's like, cause, is it bad that I didn't know any of this happened? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. Think so. I I mean, considering it had to do with Fox, and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, I don't really watch or keep up with Fox News. I think Megan, I've always been like me about like really my biggest thing I know about Megan is when she made that comment or she asked Jane Fonda about her plastic surgery, and Jane oh. was like, "Bitch, really?" <laughs> that was on her <sighs> show, her network show after though. Honestly. Yeah, I know. Oh. Yeah, I knew but that yeah. she was on um, like a news. I knew or not news. I knew she was on like Fox, and then she got her own program, and she asked Jane that later. But I saw that, and I was like, "Well, I really don't want to look yeah. more into I Megan." I just, I just remember hearing about the Roger Ailes like scandal, but I didn't like you know care to delve deeper into it. I just heard about it, and I was just like, "Oh, uh-huh. yeah, that sounds like something that would happen over there." Um, <laughs> You're like not surprised. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, "Okay, yeah, that sounds like something that's probably." accurate i feel like really bad that i didn't know because you you know i was in becca right it was all around about news and broadcasting yeah (laughs) that's true yeah oopsie but this came out in 2016 so we already graduated right yeah and i was in la at the time so i was looking at kardashian stuff (laughs) (laughs) i was at the kylie jenner beauty school overlining lips 101 (laughs) oh my god one thing that I thought was interesting, the idea that there are people who are like Democratic or liberals that work within the Fox News network that just like work there because they need a job or whatever. And yeah, I, I was I mean, I didn't like finding like concrete evidence when I was doing my research, but that there has been like rumors that this is like a true thing, which I mean, makes sense because people are trying to, you know, work in news. And so they're just going to take whatever job they can get. But yeah. I was like, mm. yeah, I wouldn't find that surprising at all, because like I said, like my college group of people are all like newsy people and like even I work on our campus news reporting show I'm sure you guys heard about it <laughs> wasn't I on it oh, no no I was just pretending no, that's another one that's that another another. okay that's yeah <laughs> dang so, it I thought it was famous for a second there <laughs> <laughs> so anyways the um that one they had like actual we literally it was like talent we had talent and they would come up with their own segments and talk about it and then I never wanted to be talent so I was always in the back like either helping like set camera up mic them up I don't know do whatever all that stuff and and so the people who are our talent are very ambitious and you would see like even after college they like would go off to the most random places in the in America because that's how you start in like a small town in Kentucky and kind of like move your way around and you see that with these um almost every reporter or anchor you see that they've just kind of hopped around until they finally get on somewhere and so anyways I can totally see like somebody working at a station where they might not agree with what the station is putting out there, but they just need it for their resume. And the other thing about um, this kind of industry is about the people you know. So, you know, if you are working with this person, that anchor maybe or producer goes off to another station, they might like call you up if they have a, a, you know, a job opening and you can go over there and follow them. It's all about who you know. So it just kind of sucks that you can't just go where you want to go. You kind of have to go where the opportunity is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But for, the only thing was is that it was so freaky seeing, like, Megan Kelly's face and then hearing Charlize Theron's voice. Am I saying her name right? Charlize Theron. 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 Yeah, Theron, Theron, honestly. Yeah. Um, but, like, you know, because yeah, they did she, a lot of prosthetics on peeps but it looked good it looked just i kept forgetting lighter. that that was nicole kidman too i was like that does not look like i had to like look it up i was like i know who this is but it's like is that really her? <laughs> yeah no i mean i think nicole still kind of resembled herself a little bit whereas like charlise i felt like did not look like herself at all and it was just like freaking me they, out. like taped her eyes or something right they had to 
Yeah, her nose. Where her, I think it was her nose. Oh, yeah. It felt like the eyes and the, like maybe it was the combination Everything. of both of those. Yeah, but I was just like, there's a video it, online of it. I was like, yeah. it kind of looked freaky. Oh. Like I don't know. <laughs> it was freaky, and I felt bad because I think um, Megan Kelly's like husband kind of criticized Charlize's like performance, which but I it, but even Megan said he was kind of being like too critical um because he was like oh she didn't capture you know your uh your humor and stuff like that but then i was like i felt like she couldn't really move her face that much yeah <laughs> she, you know, like, yeah, well, yeah he that, that and- she's talented and it was a good performance but he felt like her voice was a little forced to sound oh there was like that Megan. definitely yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was like how can you show humor in a movie about sexual harassment though <laughs> i just think like she he said also, that her character was like too like just one dimensional like, versus mm-hmm. yeah yeah yeah, whereas I mean, like I think a part of because it, it, Megan Kelly didn't have a, like any type of what is it like role in the movie like she didn't have any input right on like how like she didn't help Megan Megan no, Kelly she didn't help at all yeah oh, so no, like they, I think also about... like it's kind of just based off of what yeah you Rose see there and like yeah. have seen, has seen of her or whatever yeah. so yeah I mean well I think that Charlize did do a good job it just like kind of it was just so freaky because you're like your brain is like I see one thing but I hear something else. And you know what I mean? It's like, what is going on? Mm, yeah. you're, you're tricking me. I know you are. So, but other than oh, that, um, fun fact, real quick uh, this movie has the same screenwriter as The Big Short. Oh, really? So, oh. If that guy's everywhere at all, then. <laughs> when I kind of know. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I forgot. She like that both. bathtub yeah. scene, really? Because <laughs> he also did um, The Blind Side, right? Is that what you said? Is that what we said? Uh, no, the the author of the book was the same as The Blind Side. Oh, okay. But not the screenwriter for the movie. Okay. Yeah. But after I read that, I'm like, yeah, I, I can see the, simula- yeah, the similarities definitely yeah. between the two movies. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. They, they also had that moment where um they she would break the fourth wall. Remember when she was kind of like walking and she was like, we haven't seen a rat in mm-hmm. four months. So it, yeah, kind yeah. Of yeah I can see the similarities. And it's very, it's enter- like the entertainment values, I feel like is very similar. Just like it kept me engaged and it felt like it went by really quick too. I know. Yeah. Cause that was my thing. I was like, eh. well, cause I would, I saw this as like a recommended movie for me to watch for probably a year now. And I've been like, man, I don't know. <laughs> so watching it, I'm like, oh, okay. That wasn't too bad. Cause didn't we say, didn't I say the big short, that was hard for me to swallow. Yeah. <laughs> cause I felt really dumb the whole time. I was like, what's going oh, on? <laughs> I mean, it was still entertaining though. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, it seemed like I feel like this movie. I mean, it took me a bit to watch. I mean, I I watched it the year that it came out, but I feel like I was kind of put off at first because I thought that it would be really sad and depressing. And then while it does have its sad moments, I think overall it's a pretty good movie, and it doesn't mm-hmm. it doesn't bring it I down feel like, too much. Yeah, like I, even though it is about like something, I guess a serious topic, I feel like it more mm-hmm. has a, a role of like people, like the women coming, like being like, okay, we're taking back the power, kind of. A yeah, thing. yeah. So I feel like it's more. Not ins- I don't know if inspirational, but yeah, it's like kind of more like uplifting, yeah, like, empowering, yeah, like, power, let's do, let's <laughs> mother effort back. Instead yeah, of being yeah. Sad. There was one scene I wanted to talk about, but I don't know if we should talk about it now or afterwards. So should I ask you guys now? <laughs> I yeah, guess. What's yeah. What scene? It's the scene where, um, like Megan goes to confront Kayla, and she was like, "Why didn't you say something? Like, did you think about the rest of us? Like, did you think of what mm-hmm. you not saying something?" Because, um, there was that like I watched like Megan do like an interview, and they brought that scene up, and um, they were like, "Cause that scene obviously didn't happen," and they said that Megan or Megan said that she would never react like that either, um. And they kind of didn't like how it was scripted because they even said, oh, that was written by a man. I was like, mm. Mm. well, there was some, I, that's what I was going to say too. There was another article. I mean, I guess we'll just talk, we're talking about the scene okay. now. Um, there was an article that I saw that was saying basically how Megan Kelly kind of used this, all of this to her like advantage almost. And I was like, I didn't check to see, but I was kind of like, I don't know how I feel about this article because yeah. it was saying that like, yeah, this stuff happened to her, but she also used it as a way to like a stepping stone or something. Yeah. I guess to like do, there was something else within happening within, I guess, Fox where she was kind of, um, cause she wanted to leave maybe like, maybe I forget. I didn't really read the article cause I wasn't oh. really sure how I felt about it. I didn't and, read it. I'm like, yeah. what is it this? <laughs> well, it was just like, I know, like, cause I was going to read it. And then it kind of started saying something. I was like, I don't know how I feel about that, about them saying like, oh, she was using this to her advantage when it was like, she was the one who was being sexually yeah. harassed. So I was like, I didn't really take the time to read it fully, but then, but that just kind of reminded me of, of that, how like, I don't know, twisting, 
I guess not twisting, but it's like taking, um, what is it like liberties with someone else's like narrative, I guess mm-hmm. you can say. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just yeah. Of that. well, yeah, I was just kind of curious on your opinion on that, because I think that scene was kind of hard to watch because, yeah, you know, I think it was showing how Megan was kind of trying to be like, Hey, um, I'm trying to have this girl moment with you. And the girl kind of accused her in a sense and then she kind of fought back and I don't know like I think it's a really I see I feel like I see where they were trying to go with it I think it was kind of more of a thing like oh like I think a general message to like women in general not necessarily in that moment like between those two characters but be like you should always speak up in order to like help a future victim kind of a thing yeah um I guess that's I I felt like it yeah I felt like it should have gone a different way like yeah the make like you know Megan should have been like i how would I know it would have turned out like this? You know, I didn't. And, you know, she, she did say in the interview, she was like, I do think about that. I do wonder if like, I spoke up then would things be different? But I was actually, I had that whole little section oh, that if you want, yeah, because I thought, I thought it was really interesting. I had it. Um, so yeah, that's from um, an insider article in 2020. It was a whole thing where, Megan uh, and some people that were a part of it, they all had a viewing party together. And then I think she would release it on like her YouTube or something. Yeah, that's where I watched it. Yeah. Yeah. Her reaction and like her feelings. So yeah, she said, yeah, that she had wished um, she had done more or spoken up sooner. She said, quote, it's funny because I look at the Me Too movement and at no point in my view did victim number 17 blame her blame harassment on victims one through 16 she said that's not the way this movement has shaken out she continued in the video saying doug asked me uh would you would you take that scene out of the movie if you could and i said no because the truth is that i've looked back on my own life every moment from that moment forward and i do wish i had done more kelly said what if i had thrown myself in the fire back then maybe that wouldn't have happened to you so yeah i was just, just gonna think s- about it but, yeah i was gonna yeah. say maybe that scene was also trying to be something like more like an internal monologue but like played mm-hmm. out between two characters mm-hmm. instead like maybe i don't know that's, yeah. maybe that's yeah. like her yeah, that is a good point yeah her like maybe they're just like oh this is like more yeah an internal thing yeah. in her within herself and then we're just putting it in two characters so that way it's like an outward monologue mm-hmm. <laughs> um so maybe that could I, also be an but i do of it. i do disagree with one person blaming the other one for not speaking up i don't think yeah. that's right no, i yeah. think i think you know like they i think like in certain cases, maybe you should, like, if you were, like, um, f- like attacked, you know, in, in a very brutal way, and, and, the, and then the police found that your attacker, like, in that moment where you can speak up and say, yeah, that was the person who attacked me. And if you didn't, you know, that could lead to something else. Whereas this, I think, in Megan's situation, because Roger stopped harassing her, like, I can see in her head being like, oh, you know, maybe th- he stopped with me, you know, and nothing happened. So maybe he, that was just me. And, and mm-hmm. I, so yeah, yeah, I don't think anyone should put a time frame or limit on when someone should report something or, you know, like no, yeah. It's oh, yeah, whenever yeah. that person is ready. And so maybe, yeah, she just wasn't ready or didn't, you know, whatever. There's a lot of uh, variables to something like that. Right. And it's always just kind of difficult with harassment and sexual harassment because it's the whole thing. I mean, it, it's the basis of the me too movement it's you know you could come forward and say something but are you going to be believed and unfortunately it's you know takes how many people 20, 23 people that came out against him and it took that many yeah. for people to be like well if it happened to 23 women maybe there is something here and it's just like as opposed to you know violent crime where it's just like yeah there's evidence yeah we have it on video you know all that type of stuff i mean well, you could have this on video too but um but but crimes like that where it's just like it's public you know people are around public knowledge type of things like oh we're very much going to believe this person but it's like unfortunately with like this type of violence it's just she probably felt like you know who's who's gonna believe me type of a thing i might as well just be quiet and yeah Mm -hmm. and i mean also i think it's even discussed kind of in the film like the whole power dynamics he's like the person in charge of the whole Fox News basically and it's just like you know like you said people aren't going to believe you. they're going to want to and he was had a lot of loyal people with him so it's like hard to go up against a person like that when you feel like you're the only like you're only one person but then when it comes out later that you have you know all these women then you feel more empowered to be like yeah actually this did happen to me too 
kind of a thing and yeah yeah, and it's yeah. Kind of, I mean I'm sure we'll talk about you know his defenders but it's just like it's kind of like those people it's like oh I didn't see it oh it didn't happen to me so it didn't happen to anybody type of a thing and it's just like mm, that's not how that works yeah <laughs> exactly. yeah I just yeah I just wanted to bring that up because I just felt like that scene stuck out to me a lot and yeah and I and that and I did have an issue with with um yeah her kind of doing that blaming in this you know so anyways um I'll start so (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna just go through the backstory of our key players here so first of all is Gretchen. So Gretchen was born at Nanoka, Minnesota. She was a prodigy viol- violinist who performed on their on radio and television and even studied at Juilliard Art School of Music in NYC. In 1988, wow. she was crowned Miss Minnesota. In 1989, she was crowned Miss America and she was the first class of <laughs> it Really? Good. She's, it's good she's doing all this. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, "Dang, she was Miss America." <laughs> She said it in the movie. Yeah, I think it was mentioned. Oh, I didn't hear that. Dang, I'm impressed. (laughs) And she even she even said it like she even talked about her playing violin in the movie too. Because I I don't remember. I don't know. Okay, because there were a couple moments where like um, I definitely heard that part where she was said something about her her fingers and how I don't know maybe like the calluses maybe she got or something like that. Uh, And she was like, "Yeah, it reminds me when I play the violin." I was like okay did that did she really play the violin or are they just like putting that in so that's why it, like it stuck out to me mm-hmm. so yeah so uh, yes she was miss Minnesota. then she was miss america in 1989 and so with that win she obviously um that opened her up to many opportunities so she met with president reagan and made many television appearances one of them was her playing a newscaster on bloopers and practical jokes with ed mcmone mcmone I'm sorry. And Dick Clark. After uh, after that, she was hit up by Hella Television Asians. That was how I wrote it. <laughs> it was basically launched, and that basically launched her career in broadcast TV. She then she then traveled around and worked as an anchor with smaller tele- television stations. So, like I said, it's kind of like I'm trying to think of a a good um, small television station, which to me I think of as like KTVU, but then I don't think that's small because that's in LA. <laughs> But it's just kind of like, you know, that small town television station and like, yeah. you know, somewhere. Um, and then she finally got a gig with CBS and being a co-anchor of the Saturday edition of the early show. She did report on some big moments like the Oklahoma City bombing, OJ Simpson murder case, Tick, Tim McVeigh execution and the S- September 11th terrorist attacks. She first appeared on Fox and Friends as a weekend substitute host in 2006, and then she later became a full-time host for eight years and then I mean I think pretty much it's all accurate um then you know she got her own show and (laughs) the the movie explains the rest (laughs) so Megan so Megan's upbringing was not as interesting as Gretchen (laughs) she was not not as America (laughs) she was not a prodigy violinist sorry Megan (laughs) but but she she it does not yeah it does not mean she was um She's not interesting. Uh, collections, I'm sorry. I just thought of Courtney Kardashian for some reason. Anyways, Megan was born in Champaign, Illinois. She earned her undergrad in political science and then her JD from Alabama Law, Law School in 1995. She was an associate at the Chicago Law Chicago office of law firm Beckel and Brewer and so from her Wikipedia page she was a lawyer for 10 years and I think she like says that all the time (laughs) because I think she said it in that interview we're talking about um when they asked her like if they would keep that scene with Margot Robbie asking like you know did you think you know the where she reacted to the movie i don't know why mm-hmm. i think i went like that but she reacted to the movie because i think she said like i i was already a lawyer for 10 years because she said um you know if she did say something then and lost her job and didn't work in t- tv anymore it would have been fine because she was already practicing law for 10 years so she could have just went back to being a lawyer and i think in the movie she said it a couple of times as well so yeah guys she was a lawyer at one point you didn't know <laughs> now you do yeah um so then in 2003 she moved to dc and was hired by the abc affiliate wjla tv 
like see one of those stations. Those are like the small stations I'm talking about. It's just a bunch of letters. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is. Uh, like they say it in Wikipedia. And, and to me, it's just, it's like when you go to the eye doctor and they're like, now read the letters. You know, that's what it looks like. Um, <laughs> uh, so she was a general assignment reporter. She covered national and local news. CNN president Jonathan Klein later said he regretted not hiring Megan as a reporter at the beginning of her career as she was the one talent you'd like to have from somewhere else. But I don't really understand what that means. Yeah, it was like, the like, general thing I've ever heard. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wrote it down and I read it a couple of times. And I was like, and I was like, even saying it again, like for the 15th town, I'm still like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but overall, he regrets not hiring her. In 2004, she got a job at Fox News. She, con- she contributed legal segments and later hosted her own legal segment. She climbed her way up and occasionally contributed as an anchor, but more often as a substitute anchor on the weekends. On February 1st, 2010, Megan began hosting her own two-hour afternoon show, America Alive, and the viewership increased by 20%. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's so random to me though that she went from being a lawyer to, um, like, an anchor. You know, I just I find that like, yeah. yeah. And let me say she why likes to talk. she does. Yeah, but to me, the reason why I find it strange is because I don't know about you guys, but for me, when I get in front of a camera, I like freeze. I like forget everything I was about to say. I'm my brain goes dead, and yeah. it's. That's why I, I find it hard to believe like it, or swallow that she was a lawyer and then she became a news reporter because, you know, for someone like me who also talks a lot, it's like, like I get on the camera and I'm like, uh, and on top of that, being a news reporter is really, really difficult because you have to be very clear. It's a lot of inflection, enunciation to have that. I mean, she's sorry, she's a, a white blonde lady. So, you know, her. English and you know just maybe being able to enunciate all these words and and speak in a way where an audience can easily understand you that might just come easy for her from her background but that for me sometimes I have a hard time with that because when I get really nervous I start talking even faster and then nobody understands me so <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's another thing that I I just I know how hard it is to be a news reporter so that's why I'm like dang you went from one hard thing to another hard thing that's like crazy but she didn't have to take a test for this one. That's actually, you know, that bar, the bar guys, <laughs> the bar, <laughs> the bar. All right, let's move on to Kayla. So Kayla isn't, like we said, she isn't a real person. She was based off of many different people that many of the women that, um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> that Roger sexually harassed. Yes. The victims. I was like, what is the word? So when I first saw her, I thought she was playing Tommy Lauren but yeah I thought so too yeah so she reminds me of (laughs) yeah I think so honestly I think they wanted to base um some of Tommy into her like she said she was this millennial right she's blonde she's pretty she's ambitious and so I think they wanted to take that from Tommy and put it into Margot or maybe Margot was inspired by Tommy who knows it's good to also see her character because we're also millennials and I think it kind of helps us relate to her and see that like it's all it's this stuff is still happening because I think for me at least I heard about this all the time so when I was in college and we um, had to do internships and we would have to report to our teacher like literally all the teachers brought up sexual harassment and I was like "Mm, what like does that still happen and it does so it's like a little bit of a reality check for me all right Roger Roger. So Roger was born in Warren, Ohio. His parents did divorce, but I didn't see much detail about them moving out while he was at school. His father was abusive. I did see that, but um, I just didn't think the whole like him being paranoid was that important. Uh, he, he was your, he had your typical broadcasting career. So this is like the career that like everybody thought they would have when they first get into broadcasting television. And I say this because this is literally like how they taught it to me at school. You're first a PA, which is a production assistant. You're like the little bitch of the production. <laughs> then you're the producer. And then you're the ex- executive producer. And then you make connections. And who's his connection? Richard Nixon. He became his executive producer and helped with his pre- presidential campaign. And then he worked with Ronald Reagan with his reelection. Then he wrote a book. And then he became the president of CNBC. And then he was hired by Rupert Murdoch in 1996 to become the CEO of Fox News. 
So I know that's like very, very short, but I feel like yeah. that is the stages. <laughs> like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like when you start a career, you literally think that's how it's going to go. It's like you first start here, then you go there, then you go here, then you go there, then you go here. And then you're at the top. Yeah. And if you're a white man, that's how it goes. <laughs> Sort of. I thought you were going to say, if you're a white man, then you sexually harass the <laughs> and then fall down. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so let's um, go into the scandal that Gretchen, her accusations and stuff. In 2016, Gretchen Carlson filed a sexual harassment lawsuit against Roger Ailes. As in the film, she filed the suit after she was terminated from working at Fox News. Her suit was filed by the law firm Smith Mullen of Montclair, New Jersey, <laughs> when it names Mr. Ailes as the sole defendant. Again, like in the film, she, she didn't like sue Fox News. She went after him. Because she couldn't technically yeah. when she was yeah. brought on to Fox. Her lead lawyer, Nancy Erica Smith, said in an interview that Miss Carlson's grievance was with Mr. Ailes personally, not the Fox network. Carlson was indeed gearing up for this lawsuit before her termination, but once she was terminated, it obviously pushed them to go ahead and file it right away. Um, and I think this is probably just because, like, as in the film, we also discovered later on that she was, like, recording all these conversations. So I think she was kind of just, like, getting a lot of evidence in order to file this lawsuit against him. Here is like a kind of bullet point format of all the accusations that were kind of laid out in her lawsuit. Um, So Ailes would ask Carlson to turn around while in his office so he could view her from behind. He also regularly commented on Carlson's appearance, particularly her legs, and would urge Carlson to wear certain outfits that he thought enhanced Carlson's figure. He told Carlson she was sexy, but too much hard work and told her, I'm sure you can do sweet nothings when you want to. Ailes wondered aloud how anyone could be married to Carlson and said that marriage was boring, hard, and not much fun. Ailes told Carlson that if he could choose one person to be stranded with on a desert island, he would choose her. Ailes told other people in Carlson's presence that that he had slept with three winners of the Miss America pageant, but not Carlson. Because like like you said, she won the Miss America pageant in 1989. On a separate occasion, as Carlson walked over to greet him, Ailes said that he remained seated when women approached him, so they had to bend over to speak to him. Ailes asked Carlson how she felt about him and then said, do you understand what I'm saying to you? When Carlson met with Ailes in 2015 over concerns of her treatment at the company, Ailes told her, I think you and I should have had a sexual relationship a long time ago, and then you'd be good and better, and I'd be good and better. Um, Sometimes problems are easier to solve that way. Mm -hmm. At the same meeting, he told her that he could make anything happen for her if she listened and understood what he was saying. And then also, I just wanted to mention that the suit also details i guess some accusations she made against her fox and friends co-host steve Ducey or whatever his name is and yeah so but even though he's not like the one that she's going after she also just kind of put that in there i guess to kind of show that there were these things happening to him that she did speak about but that no one did anything um about and then yeah so for her compensation which she was it just said that she was seeking like monetary compensation for the damages to her career and reputation um but in the end she was awarded 20 million dollars Mm-hmm. everything so where are they now <laughs> so Gretchen Carlson in 2017 she wrote a book titled be fierce stop harassment and take your power back which speaks on her experience coming forward with her allegations she also had a special on lifetime titled Gretchen Carlson breaking my silence where she travels and kind of investigates stories of sexual harassment um I guess she also worked with congress members to introduce the ending forced arbitration of sexual harassment act which is mouthful um which mm-hmm. sought to end the practice of cases of sexual harassment at companies being dealt with behind closed doors so that way they had to you know do everything in public and so it allowed employees to take their cases to court instead of just being settled within the walls of that company there's also a report that I guess the House passed the Forced Arbitration and Justice Repeal Act or FAIR Act, which encompasses the issue Carlson supported, but is more far reaching. And I guess because of the NDA, she can't really go into detail about what really happened. Or that's why she also had no kind of part in the movie Bombshell because, you know, she couldn't say anything. But I guess she was asked kind of like, oh, when you worked at Fox did like what you were reporting on did that align with what your true ideals are and she obviously couldn't really say but she says that she no longer watches Fox Network so Mm. I don't know if that really (laughs) says anything I don't know because when I was reading this I was like I don't really care about like whatever not like about her but I mean like about what she's doing and I'm like like because of again where she worked and like her ideals I'm like just 
that doesn't make her a good person still. But then this, that's I was like, I don't know. Well, I don't really know if I believe that. So Megan Kelly in 2017, she was the host Megan Kelly today show that was on NBC, but she left that show about a year later because I guess they had an open on air discussion about wearing blackface as a Halloween costume. And I guess she received a lot of backlash about that. So then after shortly after that incident happened on her show, they, um, she parted ways with the show. And I guess she has launched a new media company that has a podcast that she is the host of, and it's called the Megan Kelly show. So she has, and I guess it's like pretty popular. It's like number one on mm-hmm. whatever podcasting thing, um, probably for conservative people or something. I don't know. Yeah. That blackface thing. That was probably the first time I'd ever heard about Megan Kelly. Really? Just because of that scandal. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know that happened because I heard about her show, but I didn't obviously watch it because I didn't care about her. Um, <laughs> but I didn't even know that happened until I was reading this. Yeah, because, like, wasn't the gist of it was that she was, like, half defending blackface if it came from a place of, not inspiration, but, like, from a good place and not a mocking place or something like that. So she's kind of defending I'm not sure, the use but of I, blackface. I yeah, I'm know. not sure, but I could only assume that, yeah, it was because she was defending the use of it. And that's why yeah. it got a lot of backlash, which makes sense. And I'm like, okay, why would – some of the yeah, things I mean, that she, people She later like, apologized, but it's just like, ah. <laughs> that's what i'm saying some of the things these people like think are okay to say or talk like, i'm just like why yeah <laughs> and it's like also like even the fact that she had to come back and apologize like couldn't you discuss this i'm sure there's people that are producers and stuff on your show like how come people don't like i don't know like do they yeah, not i mean realistically because- it would have yeah made more sense if they would have come i mean and maybe they did and i don't know but i i believe her apology was like a written apology but what made it what would have made more sense yeah is if they if she came back and then had a discussion with i don't know black people yeah and brought them on and been like educate me that's how that works yeah i don't know <laughs> but whatever megan <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, she's doing her own thing now. Um, and so for Roger Ailes, um, he's dead. <laughs> uh, Yay. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to say this, but uh, he is no longer alive. That took me so long to like figure out because I kept looking him up. I'm like, oh, he's 77. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. What's going on? And I was like, how come it stops after like, I was like, how come it doesn't say what he's doing right now? What's going on? And I kept looking, I mean, but he looking, was- looking. And he's also was pretty like, old oh. too in the film and at that time he was already pretty old but i guess um, yeah he, my mom he, thinks um, that his wife did it really <laughs> yeah. she pushed him <laughs> yeah because i mean i her and i watched this movie the other night because uh, she hadn't seen it at all and um she's like how much is he worth where's he at now and i'm like well he's dead and yeah. blah, blah blah she's like mm, the wife did it <laughs> oh, millionaire my- <laughs> I know because when we were when I saw that he was on there, I was like, "Oh, what are they up to now?" I was like, uh, "Isn't he dead?" And then I like looked to confirm, and I was like, "Oh yeah, he's dead." <laughs> anyway, on May tenth, twenty seventeen, Ailes fell ill or fell, and he fell ill. No, he he fell. <laughs> yeah, he, he fell. So he, the wife did do it. Oh my god, yeah, pushed him. <laughs> so he fell and hit his head at his Palm Beach, Florida home. He died on May eighteenth, three three days after his seventy seventh birthday. The Palm Beach County Medical Examiner attributed his death to subdural hematoma aggravated by hemophilia which is i guess his um disease that he had where i guess it has something with the blood clots or that or the other a lot yeah and so i was just like bam isn't that um and this this basically happened right after all this shit i know Mm -hmm. that's crazy i mean some of it was still ongoing technically yeah Yeah, he died yeah wow I guess you're you're literally about to talk about this, Alec, but I just can't believe his wife stood by him. <laughs> I mean, and she was the third wife too, because I was just like, who the heck would marry this guy? Yeah. And then I was like looking into it, and they were talking about Rudy Giuliani and how Rudy Giuliani um, officiated his third wedding, and I was just like, hmm, <laughs> where are the other women? <laughs> I guess they got out while they could. <laughs> Anywho, but yeah, let's let's talk about who supported him. <laughs> So I got this from Time Magazine and the New York Times, but yeah, they kind of, they kind of sort of show this in the movie, but I guess in real life, it was kind of more intense that she had contacted. Oh, and get this. So the, she was an anchor, I believe she's like one of the, the really attractive anchors that where they had that whole scene in the dressing room where they were putting all the dresses and stuff like that. Um, Kimberly Guilfoyle, I believe I say her last name. Mm-hmm. I think so. Um, yeah, she was one of the anchors, and also she is with uh, Donald Trump Jr. 
oh still, yeah still that makes- with him <laughs> and it's just still. like mm-hmm. <laughs> seems about right anywho so beth ailes <laughs> roger ailes wife contacted kimberly a Fox News co-host, to help marshal support at the network for the Fox News head, according to Vanity Fair. Uh, in the movie, Guilfoyle is portrayed distributing pro Ailes t-shirts, demanding that women around the office put them on. <laughs> and then get this, she reportedly left Fox herself in 2018 after allegations of sexual misconduct, which she subsequently denied, were made against her. So, wow, what an environment at Fox. Fox. I don't know. I think she, I think she stepped away or something like that. Um, other women at Fox spoke out on Ailes' behalf, including uh, Greta Von Sisterin, Sistern, um, and Janine Pirro, who both hosted their own shows on the network. Um, in the movie, we see Pirro confront Kelly at the snack machine, though this is likely fictionalized. <laughs> Megan Kelly, meanwhile, remains suspiciously silent, as depicted in the movie. Beth Ailes also reached out to Kelly, but Kelly claimed she could not speak out about the situation until the investigation was over. Um, and then there's also a, like, brief moment where they throw it to uh, the journalist uh, Geraldo Rivera, and he's just kind of like, mm, <laughs> I don't know what to do. And then I think later he does say something. But um, yeah, so they were an- initially skeptical of Gretchen's claims. But uh, Geraldo Rivera apologized in a Facebook post say, uh, post for casting doubt on her claims, saying he was, quote, filled with regret. And then also, as I had mentioned, uh, Greta Van Sistern, the TV anchor, she also defended him and she later published a post to Facebook expressing her own regrets. Quote, um, I read Geraldo's Facebook post in which he said he regretted not believing Gretchen Carlson's claim of sexual harassment. We all regret it. Uh, she also assigned, assigned blame to Mr. Ailes' superiors at Fox News and its parent 21st Century Fox writing, quote, I regret that Roger Ailes was not supervised by those in a public corporation who had the duty to supervise him. Mr. Rivera, um, who said on Twitter at the time, I stand with Roger Ailes and and then Greta at the time said that Carlson's claims didn't have, didn't ring a bit of truth to her. And then also, um, not surprising, Sean, ha- Sean Hannity dismissed the claims as, quote, BS. <laughs> Some of them reversed their positions, but seems largely the male anchor z- yeah, and they probably only reversed their opinions because it's probably backlash or whatever the hell, you know, like against them and like only for their own probably freaking image. Yeah, but I did find it very interesting that uh, Greta said that thing that it should have been the higher ups that were supervising Roger to do something about it. It's just like, that's not how that works. <laughs> no, he's the like, CEO. First of all, there's, yeah, it's like, there's hardly anybody above him. What are you talking about? <laughs> She's talking about Rupert. I guess. And it's just like, he's, he's doing other stuff. Like, yeah. 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 Well, so at my company, it's like the CEO reports to the board of directors, but it's exactly the same. Like they're not there all the time, you know, watching him and what they kind of supervise is like the numbers. Right. So they'll see Mm -hmm. when they have their meetings, they'll see all the numbers and what's the future plan and, you know, how are we going to fix this and blah, blah, blah. At least, I don't know, that's what it sounds like it goes on in there and um and yeah they're not going how's your behavior have you been treating <laughs> your employees well you yeah know? so yeah that doesn't make any sense um and what was I gonna say oh did you guys see that Barbara Walters and him were friends yeah I mean no but I don't doubt it because tv well not I'm saying like- anything to Barbara's character but it's just like it's kind of like the Harvey Weinstein thing it's just like if you had no experience with it personally, there was nothing stopping you from being an associate with that person. Yeah. So, well, I was just like, Barb's, where did you have to say Barb. all this? <laughs> Barb's. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Well, I know? mean, yeah, I know that is. I wonder if she, because I mean, I, I try to think that too. Like, what if someone I knew, like it came out, something like that, I'd be like, yeah, and especially yeah, if mean, it's like uh, widely known that you guys are close friends, you mm-hmm. know, it'd be like, hmm. so we already talked about Gretchen. She got 20 mil. You go, girl. But honestly, it doesn't compare to how much Roger got. OK, so he got. That, how, yeah, that's crazy to me. So how much did he get? Because like, um, 
Where so I thought he got forty million, but the movie said he got fifty million, and then Wikipedia said that he got sixty five million. I mean, regardless, he got hella like way more, he way more. Got any? It's in the millions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, way more. And I mean, part of it. Okay, one thing I can't like you know talk. You know, we can't really um do anything about is that they you know he was under a contract, so we don't know what the contract says. So you know, and I'm sure when they signed that contract, they didn't think this was going to come up. So that could be a huge part of why he got so much at the end of the day. You know, uh, I don't know. It's I'm not a lawyer. I don't know how those things go. Um, so I watched a oh, that one interview that I keep referring back to because it's like the only one I watch. <laughs> um, so it says that Fox spent around 45 million in settlement payouts uh, in at the end of the day, that's not a lot of money. Like those victims should get a lot more because uh, some of them lost their jobs. Like, so in the movie, you know, that girl that Jennifer Morrison played, um, you know, when Megan goes to another mm-hmm. station, mm-hmm. It's that girl. So she said that she got fired and she um, lost her house and mm-hmm. she didn't say how much she got, but another girl said she got a hundred thousand dollars. I'm like a wow. hundred thousand dollars. So if she got, if the other, you know, if they got around the same, that's really not worth it. And so wait, so the girl, so she lost her job at the job place that we saw on. No, no, no. Emily? She lost her job at no. Fox. Okay. She, okay. she, that's she, why she was, was there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She was harassed by Bill O'Reilly. Oh my God. In the interview, she was saying how like Bill would call her while he was jerking off. Mm. And one time he called her and she was at her mom's house and she literally put her put him on speakerphone and her and her mom listened to him. Yeah. Mm. I'd be like, are you getting I'd be like, mom, go get your freaking phone and record this shit. <laughs> this is nasty. That's so, disgusting. Yeah, that is really disgusting. But like I said, she was one of those people who lost her job, lost her house. And she, and that, and that really sucks. And also kind of lost her career. And that was like a big factor that, oh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. I need to focus on what I need to talk about. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So like I said, like in, it it sucks because they didn't really, I don't think they're fairly compensated, but each victim has their own opinion because the other girl Rudy, I believe it's Ruby, Rudy, the one where they were like referring back to her case because she, mm. the guy mm. asked her, asked to see her hotel room. Yeah. So she said she's okay with it because Roger, his reputation is gone. You know, the other male anchors who were also um, were fired or whatever, they, yeah, their reputation is gone and she's okay with that. She's okay with the fact that people finally know she's she can live with that. So like I said, each victim has their own opinion. Uh, money-wise, I think it's it's just not cool. All right. So I'm going to read from CNN. What has changed at Fox? So let's see. Okay. So the rot at Fox started at the top. Ooh, I like how that sounds. The rot at Fox started at the top. <laughs> With Roger, but it didn't end there. In the months that followed, other men accused of sexual misconduct were also sent packing, including 8 p.m. star Bill O'Reilly. I just, that name, it's such a catchy name. Poor Bill, he just screwed his own name up. Anyways, most everyone stayed in house, ales built while management tried to clean up his mess. The fallout kept Fox's lawyers busy for years and cost the company tens of millions of dollars in settlements. The Murdochs and the management team made some tangible changes, new human resource leadership, a workplace council to address sexual harassment, a new procedure for sexual harassment complaints, a 24 7 hotline, a makeover for the New York newsroom and replaces Ale's old bunker um, of an office. Uh, several, still several lawsuits alleged that a sexualized climate language long after Ailes has left. So it says the culture has not changed, says attorney Lisa Blumen 2019, when she filed a lawsuit on behalf of commentator Britt Henry alleging misconduct and retaliation. They gave a lip service to the idea that they have improved, but they have not. This is my fifth client I'm representing against Fox News. Nothing has changed. Ooh, which I'm mm-hmm. not surprised about because yeah. to be fair, this isn't something where you can just like do night and day, you know? And if you do want to do it night and day, you're going to have to do a serious makeover. That's going to cost you a lot more money. And I feel like Fox is like, well, well and I think so much also the, just the type of people that work there and their ideals yeah. 
And the thing, yeah, I don't know, just that in of itself to me just speaks to why this is also happening. Not that it can't happen in other places that are opposite of them, because I'm sure 100% that it does. But I don't know. It was just it, like, like we said before, it's just not surprising that the, this type of stuff is happening at this type of facility. <laughs> well, it's true because Megan was even saying how she went to another network. I think it was like MSNBC. I can't remember. And she said it's the same thing. And I can see every, not every, I feel like I'm, sh- okay. Um, it makes me think about like tech companies because like, all right. So when you say like, I work at a tech company, like everyone's like, oh my God, is it Google? Is it Facebook? Is it like, you know, Instagram? What is it? Pinterest? Oh my God. And then <clears throat> when you say no, and then people are like, why don't you want to work at one of those? And you're like, cause it's like not that cool. Cause <laughs> It's like most of them, they have like very similar cultures. Like, yeah, they provide all this free stuff. You know how tech companies do. They try to make it look cool and stuff. But because they're so big and ginormous, you're basically like a number to them because there's so many in the machine. Yes. I know. I was going to say like, it's a factory. Like they just, they, you're just in and out. You're just in to do the job. And a lot of people like work, working at smaller um, startup companies because it's just a lot more family like you know it's just kind of more comforting it's people care about each other that's how I see it with these these networks you know probably being around the same like they're all the same and sorry I was like I can't imagine one being better and handling their culture and their company versus the other sorry I feel like that's really helpful I feel really bad saying that but I mean I think it's just reality I think that happens on everywhere like that's why all companies have like you know their division that handles stuff like that like I was just like trying to figure out if like this scandal specifically like led to other scandals and like or not other scandals but like other um networks and like heads of networks you know falling falling from grace I feel like we always say that um but you know being held accountable I guess is the better but it kind of more when did Harvey when did that Harvey thing happen just about to say that oh, okay so, I <laughs> so really all i could find is that you know this scandal at fox news is just like like you said it was kind of just like the catalyst of all of these scandals because um gretchen filed her lawsuit in july of 2016 and the new york times published their weinstein report in october 2017 which ultimately 80 women um, accused weinstein and 23 women came out against ales so it's like 2016 and 2017 were kind of like the biggest years for the me too movement and like that's like pretty much when everybody started you know me too that's the movement you know everybody started speaking up about it and so i was like trying to see if anything you know else with other networks but really all it really came down to was harvey weinstein because harvey Weinstein, like that scandal was like kind of took over it was like the scandal of all scandals pretty much yeah um what about bill didn't he also die shortly after? No, he's in jail. Weinstein, he is? I thought he died. Yeah, he got COVID, I think, while he was in jail. Or maybe, yeah. I think he did or something. My remember he I was- thought he died. Maybe I'm just confusing the two of them. No, <laughs> he did not. I'm pretty positive he's in jail right now. Alec, are you looking it up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was going to ask, yes. like, when was the alive. Bill Cosby thing? Yeah, it was all about the same time. Mm-hmm. Dang. Yeah, all of it. I feel like I'm didn't like, happen. man, mm-hmm. what else happened? Who else um, turned out to be a disaster? So, yeah, after Everyone. deliberating for five days, a jury convicted Weinstein on February twenty fourth, twenty twenty, of two of five criminal charges: one count of criminal sexual assault in the first degree, and one count of rape in the third degree. Um, they found him not guilty regarding predatory sexual assault, which could have been a life sentence um ooh, wait is he in, in rikers wait <laughs> um he was sentenced to 23 years he's oh uh he's serving his sentence at wend correctional facility he's still facing criminal tri- uh, a criminal trial in los angeles oh yeah he did get covid but he didn't show any symptoms was put in isolation I just, I is recovering like he, i remember yeah. see, seeing scenes of him with like a walker too so <laughs> i think that's also why i was like i get like they i feel like they're very similar oh it says on november 19th it was reported that he did not have covid but his health is declining oh there you go so he could be dead soon <laughs> darn <laughs> <laughs> 
Dang it. <laughs> oh, you know who else? You know who else I feel like is just like I don't hear about anymore because um he was accused? Kevin Spacey. Oh yeah. He just oh, went I mean, into yeah, seclusion. Kind of, yeah. The uh yeah, all the so like I said, I was like trying to find more on this and just like more networks and stuff, but really it just kind of was just like this person and this person, and mm-hmm. it just happens that they all I mean, which I guess yeah, the majority of them were like in the entertainment industry yeah. and were on TV or actors. Well, or I think stuff it's like just because they are bigger people, so it's more to report on at the same. Yeah. 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 So there was like, yeah, there was some article that I was reading, and it pretty much just like went down the chain of everybody who has since been accused. A lot of television acres and oh, yeah. what's his name, Matt? Matt Lauer. Oh, yeah. yeah, he was the first one on the list. I was just like mm, yeah. Matt. That was cray cray. So the other stuff that I had, um, so in February 2017, um, a federal investigation into Fox News comes to light. A Justice Department investigation into Fox News is made public for the first time, and the government uh, started looking into whether or not Fox News failed to inform shareholders about settlements made with employees who accused Dales of sexual harassment. Um, And then even that investigation widened further and included um, the United States Postal Inspection Service, which investigates mail and wire fraud. So Fox just all around got into big trouble for lots of things. Finally, on kind of sort of Lisa's part, uh, (laughs) the agreement uh, resolves a legal complaint that the shareholder filed in Delaware on Monday. It includes a $90 million payment to 21st Century Fox from 30 third party insurers, minus the cost of lawyer fees and other expenses. Uh, The settlement helps to recoup the large financial toll that the harassment and and racial discrimination crisis has had on 21st Century Fox. The company has incurred about $50 million in costs tied to the settlement of sexual harassment and discrimination allegations involving Fox News in a one-year period that ended June 30th. So they, like I said, they got in trouble for a lot of stuff and they just, I don't even really know how they continue to go on because it sounds like they are just hemorrhaging money. (laughs) Well, I guess- I'm doing the research. Is that like one of like, I don't know. I was number reading one. something that said they had like. Hmm. Oh, I was just saying, I think I, I just think it's because they have a lot of followers. So that's why they're. Yeah. That's to, what I was because, about to say. There's yeah. Like, yeah. Something I was reading that said they had like 2 million daily viewers or something like that. And then mm-hmm. like what um, Kayla was saying about how her family was the type of family who like had the logo burned into this, uh, into their TV because they just kept it on all day. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I hate it yeah um lastly I just had some stuff on Bill O'Reilly because I felt like they kind of briefly like had little spurts of what was going on with Bill O'Reilly and then they kind of were just like and then they gave him money and let him go so I was just like mm-hmm. what even is going on here so um I tried to sort it out but it's kind of weird because Yeah, so the company, they pledged to clean up its workplace and foster a culture of trust and respect after the scandal first burst into public view in July 2016. Yet in the months that followed, allegations continued to surface at Fox News and in other divisions. And in February, the company granted Mr. O'Reilly a four-year contract extension worth $25 million a year, even though it was aware of at least six settlements involving harassment allegations against him which is what I like kept seeing everywhere. I'm just like, what? They renewed his contract, even though all this is happening and he's got accusers and what are you doing, Fox? Because he brings an audience and he, he brings the money. So that's why they don't care. I know. Um, November, let's see, November 2016, uh, Megan Kelly's memoir alleges harassment by Ailes. Kelly alleges in her memoir that Ailes made unwanted sexual advances towards her. O'Reilly tells uh cbs this morning that he's not interested in making my network look bad referring to kelly o'reilly adds on his own show if somebody is paying you a wage you owe that person or company allegiance if you don't like what's happening in the workplace go to human resources or leave (laughs) that's uh that was his feelings on it and her book and kelly in general and i was just like yeah i wish it were that easy right to do that (laughs) yeah uh -uh. uh-uh And then it's like, have um, you ever gone to human resources? Have you (laughs) ever even like, no, that's not how it goes, homie. Uh, Yeah. 
Um, so O'Reilly was later the subject of a New York Times investigation that revealed five women had been paid settlements from O'Reilly, Fox News, or 21st Century Fox since 2002. Uh, O'Reilly was ousted by the network in April 2017. So I kind of have a, a little uh, timeline that I found um, from Time Magazine. So April 1st, 2017, the New York Times reports that O'Reilly and Fox News News paid $13 million to settle sexual harassment claims um, to a total of five women who worked or appeared on his show to dissuade them from pursuing litigation or speaking out publicly. That investigation included a lawsuit filed by a former producer, Andrea Macris, who was publicly settled in 2004. O'Reilly claimed no wrongdoing in the case. Uh, their investigation included a lawsuit by former O'Reilly denied any. Yeah, yeah. So he continues to do this. Yeah, I think every single time. So then April 4th, 2017, former Fox News guest Wendy Walsh um, spoke out and said that she was also um, uh, pers persuaded, <laughs> persuade um, from pursuing legal action. Um, <clears throat> and again, he denied the claims. So in April, on April 9th in 2017, Fox News officially announces that they'll investigate O'Reilly um, after uh, the guest Wendy Walsh and her lawyer, Lisa Bloom, publicly called in complaint to the network's anon anonymous hotline. Uh, the network announced Paul Weiss will investigate the claims against O'Reilly. And then officially, official, in April, uh, April 19th, 2017, uh, they cut ties and announced that he would be leaving the network after the investigation uh, Riley had taken a two-week vacation which she said was pre-planned on April 11th so you know that had nothing to do with it he left on his own accord type of situation so and I didn't really look into where he is now because honestly I don't care <laughs> <laughs> no well, one should ever hire yeah. him ever again or listen to anything he has to say so yeah, that's how I feel yeah. and I'm sure he's probably living life just a bit like you know business as usual even though yeah he lost his job but I'm sure it's not really affecting him in any other way I don't, yeah exactly I, I just feel like he's one of those guys who probably can get hired as like a consultant you know True. where yeah. your name isn't on the yeah mm -hmm. or some freelancer anyways but I was telling Alec that I looked up really quickly about the leg cam thing because you know in the movie they kept talking about oh, the yeah, leg yeah, cam yeah. and so I looked up something. I thought you were gonna say somebody had a camera on their legs so they look up See, that's what skirt. I thought too when she I was told like, me that <laughs> I was like, who had the that? Cam? Uh, well, let me explain. Uh, so basically, yes. you know, in the film, they kept talking about how there is a camera that they basically use to showcase the women's newscasters or anchors or whatever their legs in it to kind of, you know, because it's a visual medium, as Ailes kept saying. And so I found this article that was actually written in 2013. So three years before the allegations against Ailes even came out. And so this um, article says, David Fol Folkenfilk. Phil Flick, <laughs> don't know that name. Um, the NPR media correspondent and author of Murdoch's World recently revealed a little notice feature of Fox News' afternoon opinion, a panel of the five. It's called the leg cam, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Speaking on November 11th to an audience member in Los Angeles who asked about the network's portrayal of its females, female talent, the book touring author... Um, who is well sourced within the network responded there's responded there's a camera that they have and what they do i'm told this in absolute i'm told this is absolutely true they sort of they sort of sort the women they have by the degree of attractiveness and particularly the degree of attractiveness tra attractiveness of the legs i believe it's the seat on the front right where having arranged this hierarchy they put the woman with the best legs there and they have a camera that goes directly for the legs and so essentially they have what they call the leg cam and that is to accentuate the sleekness and design of that particular person on air and then in this article they have a couple of like gifs or gifs depending on how you pronounce it um of of um clips of basically the woman who are seating in this are sit, seated in this seat and how like the camera kind of like pans out or whatever pans in into their um into the scene or whatever and yeah basically the woman who's deemed the most attractive or had like or has the most attractive legs is seated in that first kind of spot and it's always a woman that's seated right there so yeah it's true they have it it's also creepy yeah <clears throat> yeah it's super gross it's like we don't have the mustache cam <laughs> you know <laughs> God. Who has the best mustache? I mean, Sarah, you really like really attracted to mustaches. That's what I'm saying. Like, I was just different in there. I was just thinking of the most like, what does a guy have that we could like? 
the biceps. mustache came. Um, yeah. Uh, it just came to <laughs> my head. was like bulge cam or something. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no. Uh, girl. Uh, anyway. I'm glad people are getting in trouble for it. And I hope it continues to go that way and people come forward when things like this happen. And hopefully it won't take this long and take this many people to have to come forward. Yeah. And especially with like the whole Bill O'Reilly thing, I believe you're talking about how he was accused multiple times. But then I think once everything kind of got more attention, like other people within the same field were kind of being held accountable. That's when they were like, okay, actually, now we have to like make sure that you are also fired because of all these previous things and the current one. So it's like, I don't know. It's just like, I feel like to me, it seems like they're kind of only taking these steps because there's an eye on them. And it's like the public and everyone else is kind of being like, you have to do something about it. So that's why they're starting to do something about it because otherwise I feel like because these people are bringing them in so much money they wouldn't normally do that because it's like they these people have like a fan base and everything and that's why people tune in to their network to watch them so yeah I don't know I don't really have very, well I'm not very hopeful <laughs> to me it's it's the fact that like you you need some sort of evidence and I think people you know try to be cautious of how they handle these things so it's like um, like uh, what I'm thankful for is that Gretchen, Gretchen actually did her research, her homework. She made sure she like did whatever she could to, to win her lawsuit. Whereas like other people, they may not have those types of resources or even um, who knows where they are financially, because I think I, or most lawsuits, they don't just take a day, you know, they take years and who knows how you can fund that and what they're, whoever is um, going to be. Yeah. So that's like the biggest thing. Cause I, I think the hardest part about stuff like this is that is you have to have some sort of like evidence and it, it, a lot of people don't just take what you say, which sucks, but it goes in, you know, the companies are always going to try to protect themselves too. So that's why mm-hmm. they need that. Yeah. It just sucks. People just need to get better. Mm-hmm. Do better. Yeah. Don't do it in the first place. How about that? <laughs> That's my and advice. If, and if you are the owner of the company and you find out someone within your company is doing something or is being accused, do something about it right away instead of waiting mm-hmm. until there's. Yeah, don't try to cover it up. Don't try to uh, yeah. pay out all these people until it accumulates into $90 million. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then pay out the people that are doing it. Like, come on. Thanks for joining us this week on the Internet Historians. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, po- uh, Podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, um, and give us a rating. We would also love to connect with you, so give us a follow on Instagram and also subscribe to us on YouTube. Next week, we will be discussing Frank Abagnale Jr. from the movie Catch Me If You Can. So don't forget to tune in. Thanks again, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.